about uh, love, your songs were about uh, feelings, emotions. The last one, no, not the night before, Hey Ma, was uh, more political. Um, well, it had a few political lyrics, but it had a couple of songs about love. Yep. Um, and, and in the 90s, there were a mixture. There were songs of all kinds of, you know, about all kinds of psychological states. Uh, the, well, the question is, uh, you see the crowd, you see the fans, loving some of the songs more than others in one album, right? Uh, the ones that have political statements in them, do they get through to the fans so much as the others? I think Hey Ma did. It was getting a big reception when, on the last tour when, when we played it, because everybody by then knew about the Iraqi war and what a mess it was and how we'd been conned, tricked by our governments into, into going to war. Okay. So I think it, it was a fairly, you know, when, we were, when I wrote it, 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 the Iraqi war was very popular in, in places like America. It was, and, and by it the was, time we got positive, to, it was popular. positive. And then we, then we toured it in America, just as it was turning, as people in America were going, hang on, this is a mess. So it actually was a, a great song for us over there. And, it, and in England too, the TV companies would ask for that song. They wouldn't want the single, they'd want to hear the political song. Um, hey, mother, boys are coming back, back in, in both of us, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Uh, let, me, let me think something. Uh, repeat this. Do you still believe this is a, re a rebirth? <coughs> and that it's not a reunion, you remember that? I think I think, you, I, think I, I heard you in Brixton Academy. I yeah. think we're I think we're proving that with you know we've released one album. We've released a mini album this week, last week here. Yep. And uh, we've just recorded another mini album uh, last the, week. The, I think the title is a Morning After. The Morning After. Is it the concept, <coughs> the entire concept, the night before and the morning after? It, in so much as it, it's almost two sides of the band one side of us, the, the night before, we recorded on the internet, where we would put ideas onto the internet okay. and each person could download it. We were in different continents making that record. And we, we did it's it almost... The thing about the technology, right? The new yeah. technology. Yeah. So we did it almost as an Eno, uh, an Eno kind of experiment. And then the, the night before, uh, the morning the after, morning after yeah. which we just recorded, is more low key us playing together in a room. Sad, very sad songs. Very uh, not live songs so much. Mm. We've always written those songs, but they don't always. They, do, they, do, they do, You don't do it. You don't do most of them on your, on your live. Don't days. usually do them. No, live. I mean we used to, we always write in two areas. We, we we kind of write one. We we meet myself, Tim and Larry Wright. We put a drum machine on yep. in the room, and it bangs away, bangs away, and you're right. We write this, and then you switch it off for a break, and then someone will start to play something. <coughs> And there'd be no drum machine, and it'd be very low key, and it'd be very gentle. Just and one guitar, just one beautiful, music. absolutely beautiful. If but you, you put, end up with a bunch of these things, and you don't know what to do with them. And what we used to do is, if we're lucky, put one on a record. It usually be at the end, you know, because because otherwise the record goes up and down like this. B sides or yeah, exactly. Yeah. You don't, you just don't quite know what to do with it. So this time we, we had a bunch of them, and they were beautiful. And we thought, well, we're going if we're not careful. The same thing will happen. So we thought, okay, well, let's treat this as a separate body of work. You do know, yeah. though, that if you play these songs like Dream Thrum or Five Hole, if you play them live, people are going to start crying. Mm. <laughs> you do know that, right? We don't. I mean, we also, when we come here, we're not quite sure which are the popular songs. We know Getting Away With It, um, Senorita, but it's... Say it's something and I know what I'm here for. And, yeah? Great. Yeah. So, is I know what I'm here for a big song here? Yeah. Okay. Right. Good. See, this is you know, we don't but, 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 <laughs> but the thing is that Dream Town yeah. Yeah. and Five O are also huge. Maybe yeah. the, the, the emotion, the, the yes. feeling that people will have if they listen to it is going to be bigger. Yeah. It's going to be larger and stronger. Wow. Well, the, the powerful <coughs> songs are mm. for the, for the problem. The powerful songs are for dancing. They're, they're, they're mm. for yes. for the party, for the yeah, yeah, for the fun. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you produced some songs that. Uh, have gone further than the party and yeah, the, it's take you emotionally. Take you emotions, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, we've all combined situations and experiences of growing up with some of mm. most of your songs, actually. Yeah, yeah. wow, that's the idea. Yeah. That's, that's, what, that's, that's what you that's hope for, you know, as a musician. 
it's you know that's the best thing isn't it it's when people come up and tell you what a song means to them there's, there's um, a song called out to get you uh-huh. and this, this oh, lady who ran a psychiatric, a psychiatric hospital in England came up and said this is the patient's favorite album uh, and uh, ladies and out to get you is their favorite the song. Favorite. Yeah. Did psychiatric. you get the goosebumps at that yeah, time? Yeah, of course. You heard that? Of course. Uh, another yeah. one is a great one. Everyone's a junkie. The junkie song. Junkie. Cool. Uh, all the low key songs, all this, yeah. the, these songs. Trust me, they're very popular. Yeah. Trust me, more. I think people actually listen to them more when they're at home. Yes. I understand. Yeah. Sipping some wine, mm-hmm. being with a boyfriend, being with a girlfriend, or with <laughs> friends, and the. They have their intimate uh, yeah. moment, mm. but the other songs are for the party. You know, when you're in a club, when you're in a bar, and yeah. so I have no, no 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 question marks about this. Whether you you're gonna have uh, great uh, feedback from the crowd if you play any low key songs. Yeah, cool, great. Uh, another story. Do you have another story? That was one question I had in my mind. Like uh, some of your songs. Uh, might be connected with the history, with a true story? <clears throat> well, uh, something I've only really realized recently, <coughs> excuse me, is, is um, some uh, people in England, critics sometimes talk about uh, a mental instability or insecurity in the lyrics, uh, a vulnerability. Who's, who, who, who's, who's saying that? Uh, it's different critics. I mean, like when you think of the, some of those li- songs you just talked about, and the way that out to get you works for people in psychiatric hospital. You know. um, and what I realized was I, I had a, a liver disease in my teens, uh, inherited liver disease, and it wasn't, wasn't diagnosed. So I thought that was me, and my perception of the world was through this kind of um, prism of the illness. And the illness meant that I thought I could hear people's thoughts. I would hallucinate it sometimes. I felt very isolated. I had jaundice the whole time. And I thought I was crazy. I thought I was certifiably mad. And that eventually I would get caught and locked up. Um, Just because some critics said that, or maybe your perception or your idea of being normal wasn't according to the rest of the people. <clears throat> well, exactly, because I had this, it I had this for like 14 years before the doctors realized what it was. Uh, but I, but they, nobody said it was an illness. I thought it was a mental illness. Okay. So it enabled me to live in a state of quite um, mental turmoil. And I think that's helped the songwriting or the vulnerability of the songwriting. I think that's influenced quite a lot of the lyrics I've written. So if you were mentally ill at that time, <coughs> trust me, a lot of people are mentally ill as well. Of course. Because <laughs> most of them love them. We love them. Of course. We get it. Everyone gets his own... Everyone Absolutely. gets his own meaning. Gets his, you find his own his own translation to to what you might mean. Yes. Are you good now? Are you are you gonna stab me or something? Are you no. Sure? <laughs> no. It, 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 I still have the liver disease, but like, that's how I got into alternative medicine because the doctors in in our country have nothing to do nothing for it. No no suggestion. And alternative medicine like acupuncture and meditation, okay. and all those things really okay. helped. I mean, so it must have been a huge relief to you when you found out that. I mean, it was horrible to find out that you're physically ill. Obviously, yeah, it I, was know, a I, know you, I know you were very poorly, but it must have. Yeah, it was a relief. And and you know, you get you stuck with me. I mean, it was like the because I was in the band, and I disappeared. I got sick and I disappeared for six months, and the, the band waited for me. He was in hospital for a long time. You know, doing tests. Can and I, stuff. Can he was I, very, can I can I try and guess something? Was that around 2000 in the 90s? No, no, this oh, was... Way this early. was this way early, okay. This was 1981 or 2, it was, it, when, it, when it reached it, a peak. Wasn't it in between the two songs? Wasn't it between 83 and 85? Wasn't it between, yeah. wasn't it that year where we, yeah, I think we so. took a year off? Yes, so. yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You slightly took a year off because you had to, didn't you? Yeah, but we were fighting those days. <laughs> I think we took on that little... Um, uh, the white... Uh, the white noise was it that yeah. little rehearsal room in the, in the in the cellar and just yeah. played there for a year and we were more than happy to do that. The idea of us rushing out into the business world was something that just kind of you know we weren't bothered in the least by that at that stage. But we had a first single which came out on Factory yep. and it got quite a lot of attention. Uh, and then Tim kind of the illness kind of reached a peak and you know he knew he had to sort it out and deal with it. 
so we, we kind of just disappeared into a rehearsal room for a year which was absolutely <laughs> fine and again you know these things are probably just what we needed you know, musically what we needed you know we didn't rationally you'd never choose to do something like that at that point you know you'd be off on tour for however long well again maybe 